Hello, everyone. My name is Yong Kang He. Today, I'm going to show you how to protect the containers running on your Kubernetes cluster. In this case, running on Red Hat OpenShift container platform. So first of all, before I show you how the backup and restore works, I need to build a cluster. So in this case, I will use the automation. So basically, I just run one command and in about 45 minutes, we will have a ready to use demo labs. So not only we build the OpenShift cluster and we also deploy MongoDB database and we also create a backup policy and a plus the object storage location and also run the initial backup jobs. All of these done in 45 minutes. So once the cluster is up running, the first task I want to show you is how to restore to a new namespace but for the MongoDB. I will restore to a new namespace called MongoDB-new. And after the restore completed, I will show you how to back up a newly restored database. In this case, the new namespace running on MongoDB-new. Just to highlight a part of the automation, we will build the OpenShift container platform. We will deploy OpenShift container storage. We will deploy MongoDB also running on the OpenShift container platform. We will also complete the initial backup jobs. So it looks like I got the environment ready. Uh, let's first of all look at into how to restore MongoDB new, how to restore the MongoDB to a new namespace. So a couple of steps, log into custom KTN web console, go to applications tile, find a MongoDB, click restore. So you got an option to choose the restore point and then you can click a create new namespace, mongodb-new, and then you can click the restore. So let's, let me come to the console, to the web console. First of all, I need to log into the web console. And from here, you can see three tiles, application policies, data. So first of all, I click the applications, I want to do the restore. I can find my MongoDB here. It's compliant with policies. Right now, I've got six restore points. I click restore. And I can select the latest restore points. If I click on the latest timing, you actually got two options. One is a restore from the container storage. The second option is restore from the IBM object storage in this case. So I choose restore from the container storage. So I want to at least leave the rest of the advanced options. Uh, not, no touch, not touched. I just click create a new namespace, mongodb-new. Click create, we will create a new namespace. And then all we need to do is click restore. And actually before I click restore, just to highlight the options, we actually allow it to granularly restore individual objects. And uh, let's say someone deleted the config maps or maybe uh, accidentally deleted a secret. There is no point to restore the whole environment. You can just select the individual resource and do the restoration. So for now, I just reselect everything and do a full restore to a new namespace. Click restore, confirm the restore, and if I go back to the dashboard, you will see the job kicked off and shortly the job will be completed successfully. So if you want to monitor from the command line, you can go back to the IBM Cloud Shell. So as I mentioned in my first part of the video, so IBM Cloud Shell, if it was idle for 60 minutes, it will be closed and all of your temporary files also disappear. If I click close now and I can open new session. So in this case, actually the new session will be empty. So all of the GitHub repository will clone the old year also disappear. But what we can do is uh, you just go back to the GitHub page. You just rerun git clone and followed by IBM preps. 
So after complete these steps, so you're ready to go, yeah. So, okay. So let's see how the restore job looks. Actually, it is already completely successful, I believe. So if you want to monitor, actually, instead of monitor from the commodity, I want to go to the operator hub. If I go to the workloads, click ports, you can see if I go to the MongoDB, do a search, MongoDB, the new namespace, you can see my port is up running. So that means the restore is completed successfully. Now I'm going to show you how to do the backup. So let me come back to the slide deck. So I already completed the restore of the MongoDB to a new namespace. Now how to configure the backup of the newly restored database. In this case, the MongoDB dash new. So you log into, again, log into web console if it wasn't logged in and you go to application tab, so, uh, find the MongoDB app. Actually, you need to find the MongoDB dash new. And that's what we're going to complete the backup. Click and create a policy. And you, as a best practice, always enable backups of our snapshot exports. Okay, and then you can select the object storage location profile and then click uh, create policy, that's it, okay? Let me come back to the custom K10 dashboard, go to application style and uh, find a MongoDB new, that's my target database, I want to protect it. So cl click create a new policy, I already got the policy name, I can leave the rest uh, as it is, uh, like uh, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, just to highlight, we do allow it to back up every five minutes. So you can select uh, all the five minutes. We will back up every five minutes. That means your RPU will recover point objectives at five minutes. And by default, we give you the recommended snapshot retention. You, can, you are more than happy to customize based on customer requirements. So I want to enable backup of my snapshot exports. And uh, I only have one object storage, IBM will cost one cloud object storage one. It's already, it's already selected. So I'm gonna list, leave the rest as it is. So how to select the application? I already selected MongoDB new, but you can select any other namespace or you can use the label based selection. You just choose the label, say, if the label matches the instance MongoDB, we will automatically back them up. And even the newly created database, as long as it matches this label, we will automatically protect them, use the same policy. For now, I want to just leave it as a MongoDB, uh, MongoDB-new, just protect the new namespace. Yeah, there are some advanced settings uh, for now. Uh, before I create the policy, just to show you, for developers, for people who want to automate the creation of the backup policy, you click a YAML file, we will generate the YAML file. You can create the YAML file from command, just run cube, cube control, apply dash F on the YAML file, we will create the policy. For now, let me create the policy. Uh, instead of wait for next scheduled job, you can go ahead and click around once and the backup job will kick it off immediately. So let's see, if the job already kicked off. So it might take a couple of seconds. Uh, yeah, based on the history, it might take uh, roughly around two minutes to complete the backup jobs. As you can see from the screen, the policy is running. <clears throat> and if I click on the job details, you can see there are two subtasks. The first subtask is doing the snapshot, doing the backup, actually it is snapshot. So we're capturing your workload, in this case, MongoDB, the persistent one claim of snapshot. And we'll also capture the Kubernetes configurations. So everything from the Kubernetes uh, namespace, we will capture. And we also capture the MongoDB related application components. That's why you see three you know, subtasks, a part of the backup. 
if I click on the details of the job, you can see on the right hand side, you can see everything running from that particular namespace captured here. So you've got your namespace, the secrets, your config maps, your service account, your <coughs> uh, services, your role binding, etc. Everything running from that namespace we captured. So that's why when it comes to a restore, since we have the great visibility into your Kubernetes cluster, we allow it to select the individual resource to do the restore. So while we are talking here, the second subtask export to object storage also completed successfully. That basically completes the how to run the backup and the restore on OpenShift container platform. So let me come back to my slide deck. So we did the restore first, actually. We restore MongoDB to a new namespace. And then we configure backup policy to backup the MongoDB new, the new namespace. So coming next. So I haven't touched on how to migrate containers from one cluster to the other. Could be from on-premise to the cloud, or could be from uh, the one cloud other cloud to OpenShift the cloud uh, container platform. So that's what I, I'm planning to do next. Okay, uh, that's all I want to cover for today. Yeah, thanks for watching. I hope it is useful to you. Thanks once again. Have a good one. Bye.